Revelation 22, we'll begin reading verse number 1. The Bible says, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. And in the midst of the street of it, on either side of the river, was there a, the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must be shortly done, uh, or must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for the good testimonies, the good singing, the good time of fellowship, the good prayer time. Lord, thank you for being a good God. Thank you for hearing and answering prayer. Thank you, Lord, for being far better to us than we ever deserve. And thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be in your house tonight. Bless the reading of the Word of God. May your people be edified and strengthened today, and God will. Thank you for what you do, for it's in the holy name of Jesus we do pray. Amen. Amen. We do know that John, the Apostle John, was uh, banished to the Isle of Patmos. They thought he would die there alone. Little did they know he would uh, 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 have more of an audience than he would ever have anywhere else when he had an audience with the Lord. Uh, and the Lord blessed him to be caught up to the third heaven uh, and see the future. Uh, he was blessed to see even you and I that are saved in glory. Uh, uh, you say, preacher, explain that. I can't explain it. All I do is I can believe it because that's what happened uh, according to the Bible. Uh, and John pinned down what God told him to pin down. And a lot of the things uh, uh, about the future we can uh, uh, see as the Apostle Paul said through a glass darkly. Uh, 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 we can get glimpses of what's going to happen from the Bible. Uh, but yet our finite minds still cannot fully comprehend uh, the holiness of God, the glory of God, uh, the abode of God, and that you and I, uh, sinful man, get to dwell with him because he's washed away our sins. Uh, 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 it's hard to understand all that will transpire, but in these verses we get another little glimpse. Uh, 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 John has just described uh, in chapter 21 uh, New Jerusalem and some of the beauties of New Jerusalem, uh, some of the uh, uh, attributes of the city where uh, the redeemed will dwell with the Lord forever. And then in 22, he carries on the thought, uh, and he says this in verse number 1. I want you to notice, if you will, the throne. He says uh, 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 in verse 22, verse, uh, chapter 22, verse 1, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, uh, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Uh, we find in verse number 1 the mention of the throne. Uh, 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 can I say, uh, Oliver B. Green said the most beautiful sight in heaven will be the throne of Jesus Christ. Uh, not streets of gold, not walls of jasper, not gates of pearl, uh, not uh, a city built on 12 foundations of precious stones. Uh, uh, the most beautiful sight uh, is going to be the throne of God. Uh, and we find it mentioned twice in the verses we read, uh, the throne of God and of the Lamb. Uh, and we also find that in this beautiful throne uh, out of it proceedeth a river clear as crystal pure river uh, uh, can I say what else would you expect coming from God uh, except something that is pure uh, something that is without fault uh, something that is without error uh, something that is without pollution uh, because it comes from him he who is holy uh, and here is his throne uh, my dear friends there's coming a day we're going to gather around his throne. Right. 
There's coming a day where that throne is described. Uh, there are lightnings and rainbows that come out of this throne. Uh, where there are seraphim that fly over it and cry, Holy, holy, holy. Uh, there'll be a day uh, that you and I, who are the redeemed, whose name's been written in the Lamb's book of life, uh, will be there and worship Him in the beauty of holiness. Uh, we find the throne. I want you to notice in verse number 2, we find a tree. Notice this tree. Now there's a lot written about this tree, but not much said about it. You'll figure that out. Because we don't know. We haven't seen it. Uh, most commentators say that by the word tree, he means trees. Well, I believe God knows the difference between tree and trees. Mm. Uh, the Bible says in the midst of the street of it, on either side of the river, was there the tree of life which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. Now, you say, Brother Doug, explain all that. I can't. I've never seen a tree of life. Uh, most uh, want to refer back to the Garden of Eden, where there was a tree of good and evil, and uh, that was the tree that Adam and Eve weren't to eat of. Um, but can I say this isn't anything about evil. This tree is a tree of life. And it bears fruit every month. And the leaves of this tree are for the healing of the nation. Uh, can I say, uh, this tree uh, 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 is a tree that sustains uh, and a tree that heals. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, 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 after everything we've experienced in life uh, and after everything martyrs will experience in life uh, and after everything that people that go through the great tribulation will experience in life, uh, you know what we need? Uh, we need a tree that will heal us and help us. Uh, isn't it wonderful that God knows exactly how to sustain us? Sure. You say, what will this tree? I don't know, but it must be important because it's in the midst of the street. And on either side is the river. Mm -mm. It's right smack dab in the middle and it's important. You say, how do you know it's important? Because John pinned it down. Yes. We see the throne. We see a tree. I want you to notice that everything is taintless. Look in verse 3. And there shall be no more curse. Hmm? And then it get, goes on again to remind us, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. Notice there'll be no more curse. Amen. That goes beyond no more sin. Thank God we're going to a place where there is no more sin. Sure. There will be no more bad news. There'll be no more evil. There'll be no more heinous. There'll be no more white lies. There'll be no more anything but purity and holiness. There is no more curse. There is no more sin. But it goes beyond sin. Oh, my dear friends, when man chose to sin and man became a sinner and sin came into this world, can I say this world became cursed? Yeah. Go over there to the museum and go through the museum and see all that transpired once the curse befell us. Before the curse, there were no thorns. Before the curse, nothing died. Before the curse, there was no venom. Before the curse, the lion wouldn't eat you. But because of the curse, evil peril, pain, heartache, suffering. All those things came because of the curse. But we're going to a land sure. where there'll be no more curse. Amen. Everything is taintless. Everything is pure and everything is holy. Why? Because look what it says, because the throne of God is there. Now we celebrate that Jesus came here to become like us and he put on flesh and he walked among men and he went to the old rugged cross and he died, rose again, uh, victorious over death, hell, and the grave. We celebrate that. And Jesus came here, but his throne didn't. Everything over there is without the curse because that's where God's throne is. Notice something else. I want you to notice... The title. Look in verse number four. And they shall see his face, 
and his name shall be in their foreheads. Now, you've heard me say before, the devil's always tried to imitate the things of God. The devil knows the Lord loved the church and gave himself for it, and he knows the Lord has a church, so the devil has a church. His church preaches a false gospel. His church says, if it feels good, do it. The Lord's church says, be you holy for I'm holy. There's a difference. But he always imitates the things of God. God had the Son of God, and so the devil has a son. We'll know him as the Antichrist. Well, we won't, because we'll be out of here if you're saved. Amen. But can I say, the Lord, we find that in glory, the name of God is in their foreheads. And so what is the mark of the beast? It is the name of 666 and the beast will be either in their hand or their forehead. Hmm? He always imitates. Now, whether or not his name will be on our actual literal forehead or not, I do not know. It might be on our crown that will be covering our forehead. Just food for thought. But one thing's for sure, we'll bear his name. Now, if we're going to bear his name, why do we spend so much time, time trying to build up our name? Shouldn't we lift up his name? Hmm? A huh? little food for thought there. But notice something else. Notice the transparency. Look in verse 5. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord giveth them light, and they shall reign uh, forever and ever. Notice there is no night, there is no shadows. Everything is transparent, uh, and the Lord himself is the light. And he gives us the light, and we'll reign with him forever and ever. Notice the absence of darkness, Brother Kevin. What a blessing. Hmm? Everything is transparent. Not only is he the light, but everything comes to light. We have nothing to hide in glory. Hmm? Why? There's nothing to be ashamed of. Amen. You say, Brother Doug, but what about the judgment? We've already come through the judgment before we get to here. Huh? everything's been taken care of and we are now presented as Christ we'll have a body like his and we'll be just like him hmm? we see the transparency now notice the truthfulness verse number 6 I'm going somewhere hang with me and he said unto me these things are faithful and true and the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done Thank the Lord, it's going to be shortly over. Amen. But it's, tr it's truthful. He said, it's faithful and true. You can bank on it. Now, I don't know what the tree of life is going to look like, but I know it's there. I don't know what his throne looks like, but I know it's there. I don't know what it's going to be like to be in a curseless society, but one day I will. Jesus. Say why? Because God pinned it down and it's impossible for God to lie Amen. Hmm? Amen. And then I want you to notice what's trustworthy he says behold I come quickly blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book it's trustworthy he's coming quickly you can, you can trust that Amen. and when you keep the prophecy of this book, you can trust the fact you're going to be blessed. You know the best life you can live and the most blessed you can ever live is when you live the Bible? Sure. Hmm? You are a blessed person when you trust the Bible. It's trustworthy. Hmm? Matter of fact, uh, 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 I get in trouble when I trust me. But when I trust what God says, uh, it's a blessed and a charmed life. Amen. Well, this all speaks of New Jerusalem, this all speaks of after the devil's been cast in the lake of fire and the false prophet and all them are done away. This happens when uh, uh, the family of God's around the throne of God and we're shouting the victory and we're with him forever and ever and ever. 
Well, I was preaching in a big way Sunday night. I had to hurry, but I was preaching in a big way. And while I was preaching, I said something. And while I'm saying, my mind's are thinking, where'd that come from? And I was thinking about that again today, what I said, because I didn't say it. I don't know where it came from. What, my notes. But I got thinking about it. I thought, boy, that's a wonderful thought. And so I'm going to preach tonight. We're talking about the future. We're talking about heaven. We're talking about glory. We're not talking about having to go to the mall and having to fight uh, 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 all the Amazon trucks delivering everything and uh, having to deal with everything that's going on in the world. We're talking about heaven and what's going on over there. Sure. Amen. Well, it is Christmas time here. I got to think about what I said the other night. I got to think about heaven. I want to preach on Christmas and heaven. Hmm? Can I just do that for a few minutes? Sure. I mean, we, we love Christmas. Anybody not love Christmas? Let me know so I can call you an atheist and we can kick you out. Anybody don't love Christmas? Huh? Now, let me, let me just start off right here, right now. Let's just start this right now. Christmas is not a Christian thing. It's a pagan thing. Hmm? The early church didn't have Christmas. The Catholic Church started Christmas. And the Catholic Church started because it was pagan. And the Catholic Church was formed in 321 A.D., but paganism's been around since Genesis chapter 10. Okay? And it, it's a pagan thing. And a lot of things associated with Christmas are pagan. They have nothing to do with the Lord. Hmm? Matter of fact, every song you hear and everything talks about the, the wise men. If you study the Bible, the wise men didn't show up until he was about two years old. At least two. Might have been older than that. They weren't at the manger. I know that busted some of your bubble. Lisa, you'll be all right, okay? All right. It's a pagan thing. I understand that. You understand that, do you not? But the ideal of Christmas is the fact that we celebrate that Jesus was born into this world. Now, I like Christmas. I like it all. I like singing jingle bells, and I like it all. I like it. You know that. I like Christmas. If you don't like Christmas, old fuddy-duddy... Go be Ebenezer Scrooge. They even got a movie for you, huh? But I like Christmas. And I like the thought of celebrating Jesus. I don't like starting celebrating in August. I think you ought to have Thanksgiving before you have Christmas. Huh? We don't put the Christmas lights out before Thanksgiving. Because it's Thanksgiving. But I like Christmas. I like we got a month of singing about Jesus and celebrating Jesus that he came. And I, I like it. Now, I know some independent Baptists don't like it. Uh, matter of fact, we made one mad, I'm sure. Years ago, let me just say this. Years ago, this very offering table, communion table, which was in the old building. It's been there ever since they built that, the old building. That's the original pulpit, original... Uh, community table. I didn't want to replace it when we built a new building. I mean, we'd had so many good services and so much good preaching behind it. Why replace it? So we built around it. You know? Why replace the foundations? If it's true, it's, uh, it's not new. And if it's new, it's not true. Huh? So we just moved it over here. But years ago, long before I ever came here, they started this in, in the church. And, and Clint, you'll remember, you have to testify. You and Eddie, you're the only ones that can date back this far. But years ago, I don't know who'd started something. They had a real nice, pretty porcelain manger scene they put on the communion table Christmas. You remember that? Yeah. Well, when I, when I became the pastor, first Christmas, they said, oh, put out the, the manger. So I put out the manger scene. It was pretty. And then we had some fuddy-duddy Baptists show up and said, no more, a bunch of idols. Can't believe you got idols in the church. We just had a cow. Huh? Well, I don't know who, somebody bumped it and one of the pieces got broke, so I just quit putting it out because I, I got tired of hearing about it. Huh? But we got a manger scene now. Isn't that a blessing? I really wanted one. I wanted one with the, they're about this big made out of porcelain. It was a lot of money, so I didn't spend a lot of money. But I really did. And would have Ray build an actual manger. We'd done it up. Maybe next year. Huh? Now I'm going to take pictures of it so they can see it, whoever was mad. Here it is. We got a Christmas tree. We don't worship the tree. We don't worship idols. Amen. But they sure are pretty to look at, aren't they? Yeah. All right, thank you. I got two people in, in, involved in this message, huh? I know a lot that is associated with Christmas has nothing to do with 
the Lord coming and being born into this world. But I got to thinking about what Christmas is like in heaven. Hmm. You want to know what Christmas is like in heaven? Can I say this? First of all, Christmas in heaven is centered around fealty. Fealty. That's a fancy word for reverence. Brother Clint sang about it a minute ago when he sang a Christmas song. That was a true Christmas song. It was about worshiping the Lord. huh? And can I say the Bible says in heaven, this is what goes on. Uh, 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 in heaven it says uh, in Revelation 5.11, I behold and I heard the voice of many angels uh, round about the throne and beast and elder. The number of them was 10,000 times 10,000. Thousands and thousands saying with a loud voice, uh, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power, uh, riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory. Uh, uh, did you hear what that verse said? Uh, it said around the throne of God in heaven, uh, 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 there's a heavenly host uh, uh, who's crying with a loud voice uh, uh, worthy is the lamb uh, that was slain received power, riches, wisdom, strength and honor and glory and blessing uh, hey in the uh, Christmas story uh, the Bible says and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host uh, praising God saying glory to God uh, in the highest and on earth peace, good will to men uh, hey there were angels rejoicing when he was born and there's angels rejoicing in glory and so are those in the heavenly host all around the throne of glory there's reverence in heaven can I say Christmas in heaven centers around family isn't that one of the beauties about Christmas is your family gets together hmm I mean, you can get together other times here, but there's just something special about Christmas when the family gets together. Well, there's family getting together in glory. In Revelation 5, 9, it says, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof. Here it is. Uh, For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to, uh, to God by thy uh, blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and made us king, uh, made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. Uh, hey, listen. Uh, uh, God's got a family. Uh, he's going to pull out of every kindred, uh, every tongue, uh, every people, uh, every nation uh, uh, friend you got family you've never laid eyes on uh, but there's a coming a day uh, when we get around his throne uh, uh, the family's going to be gathered in uh, and forever we're going to get in glory to his name uh, can I say in heaven it's centered around fealty or reverence it's centered around family can I say this? Christmas in heaven centered around a feast. What is the family getting together with Christmas without eating? Yeah. Now, some of us eat traditional things like ham and turkey and all the fixings. This year we're changing up when we meet with her family. We're doing something we like to do at the foster house all about every Friday. We're going to have appetizer time. We're going to have all kinds of appetizers and sweets and all that. Now, the Anders, I know Thanksgiving, probably Christmas too, they have pizza. Miss Susie Homemaker, who can sew and make anything, there's two things she don't do. She don't do turkey and she don't do landscaping. Huh? That's her right there. Hmm? They do pizza. Who knew Anders was an Italian name? But can I say... There's something about getting together as family and getting around the table uh, and conversating with one another and sharing with one another uh, and enjoying the bounty of the Lord one with another. Do uh, you realize in heaven uh, we're going to a feast? Uh, the Bible says uh, in Revelation 19 and 9, uh, And he saith unto me, Right blessed are they which are called unto the married supper of the Lamb. Uh, and he saith unto me, These are the true saints of God. Uh, what a blessing. I don't know what we're going to have in heaven, uh, but it's going to be wonderful. Uh, I mean, hallelujah, give God, glory to God. We're not going to the fast. Uh, we're going to the feast, uh, and we're going to get around the table of God, uh, and we're going to talk with God, uh, and we're going to share with God, uh, and we're going to eat all the goodness of God, uh, and we're just going to have a wonderful time uh, right there with the Lord forevermore. Uh, now, I don't know what it's going to be, Brother Tommy, but I guarantee you one thing in heaven, 
you'll eat all you want and you won't get full. Huh? What a blessing. And you can put salt on it. You can put sugar on it. You can put caffeine in it. Doesn't matter. Not going to hurt you. What a blessing, huh? We're going to the feast. Centered around that. I knew you'd amen that, Brother Brian. Pound for pound, you eat more than any man I've ever seen. I like to see you and Peter in one of them hot dog eating contests. Boy, that'd be something, huh? I'm talking about we're going to the feast. And I got thinking about Christmas in heaven. It's centered around folly. There's just something about Christmas that lifts your spirits. I mean, most people. There's some people that don't lift their spirits. I can understand if you lost a loved one at Christmas time, it'd be tough to celebrate. I can imagine if you're alone, it would be tough to celebrate. I can imagine if you're Ebenezer Scrooge, it's tough to celebrate. But by and large, most people find it a time of rejoicing. Now, I understand there's some people stressed out. They don't have enough to make ends meet, and they feel pressure because of Macy's, and everybody running a sale. They start Black Friday in July, and then every day they're, they're inundated with junk mail, and they got to buy everything for their family because they think that uh, you earn your family's love by giving them a lot of presents. There's nothing farther than the truth. But most people, by and large, enjoy Christmas. They enjoy the folly of Christmas. I got to thinking about in heaven all the folly. You know, heaven there's going to be a lot of singing. You know, you can't sing a joyful song when you don't have happiness in heart. Uh, but when you got a happy heart, oh, you can sing. Hmm? You can just sing. You can sing fa la 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 la. You can sing oh come all the faithful. Hey, even when you're happy, even like the drummer boy. Boy, that's always long, isn't it? Huh? Pa rump a pum, that's enough, huh? <laughs> and when did the 12 days of Christmas get 28 verses? That thing seems like it gets longer every year. But when you're happy, you'll sing it. Hmm? Well, can I say in heaven, there's going to be a lot of singing. Yeah, a lot of singing about the Lord. Yeah. And every song's going to be happy yeah. and uplifting and encouraging and I thought about the folly they're not only going to be singing there's going to be rejoicing sure. nobody's going to be sad in heaven nobody's going to be upset in heaven right. no road rage in heaven everybody's going to be rejoicing uh, everybody's going to be full of uh, joy unspeakable and full of glory uh, everybody's going to have a good day in heaven uh, everything's going to be wonderful in heaven uh, everybody's answer when how you doing in heaven is going to be blessed 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 uh, wonderful because uh, I'm in glory hallelujah huh? Amen, I thought about the folly over there the singing and the rejoicing and where do you see the wardrobe we all get? Now, so I know some of you don't care what you look like. I'm not that person. I like looking nice. I like spending money on clothes. I like a wardrobe. I, I, I really ought to repent over all the clothes I got and all the shoes I got. But really, I'm not going to repent because I'm not sorry. I like them. And the Bible said, God will give you desires of your heart. So I got a lot of shoes and a lot of clothes. I like them. Huh? But listen, where do you see the wardrobe over there? Yeah. It is a white, fine twine linen that reflects his holiness. Uh, it is the righteousness of the saints. Uh, we'll be clothed with the garments of God. I mean, whoa! Uh, uh, you talk about tailor-made, uh, the finest of fabrics, uh, uh, the most beautiful of attire. Uh, we're going to be done in it. Uh, I mean, why? what a blessing. We're going to have a time when we get over there. Hmm. I'm talking about Christmas in heaven. All these things are going to be going on in heaven. All these things that we aspire and look to and hope to have once a year is going on in heaven. And that's the last point, Brother, Brother, Brother Dr. Phil. It lasts forever. Huh? Yeah, kids say, wouldn't it be great if we could have Christmas every day? Well, you can in glory around the throne we're not going to the manger we're going to the throne and we're going to see him and be with him forevermore 
every day because there's only one day. It lasts forever. The party never ceases around the throne. It's always singing and rejoicing and worship forever and ever and ever and ever. Never wear out, never get tired, never get any wrinkles in our attire. Everything's going to be perfect and wonderful forevermore. Huh? Who wouldn't want it? Exactly. Who wouldn't want to spend Christmas in heaven? Who wouldn't want to be with him forevermore? Friend, what a blessing that the little bit of joy we get from this season won't compare to the wonderful joy we'll have forevermore. Hmm? We say he's the reason for the season. Can I say when we get there, he'll just be the reason. Because there will not be any season. It's forevermore. Huh? There's Christmas in heaven every day. Uh, and the real meaning of Christmas is on display every day. And forever and ever and ever we'll celebrate Christ, sing of Christ, enjoy the family of God, feast at the Lord's table forevermore because worthy is the Lamb. Friend, you may be feeling the pressure of life. I've got good news. Heaven's just in sight. Won't be long, we'll be there. And there'll be no more pressure. There'll be no more problems, no more heartaches, no more troubles. We'll spend it forever with the Lord. And what greater gift than eternal life could we ever have? We got that gift through the precious shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So as you are starting to get the Christmas spirit, let the Holy Spirit work in your life to let you know you can have Christmas every day, even down here, by Amen. keeping your hearts and thoughts upon the Lord and His greatness and His gracious gift He bestowed on us. If you're here tonight, you don't know Him, you don't really know what Christmas is about, and you certainly aren't going to see the heavenly Christmas unless you put your faith and trust in Him. I would urge you to do that before it's eternally too late. If you're here today and you're saved, you ought to be thankful. Thankful for the Christmas season that we'll have forevermore when we have Christ forever and ever and ever. Let's all stand, Brother Clint. Come again. Song of invitation. Maybe you want to come and thank him. Maybe you're like me. You love Christmas and you want to come and thank him. You're going to have Christmas forever. Maybe you want to come and thank him for that unspeakable gift that he gave you. Maybe you want to come and just tell him how much you love him. Tell him he's the greatest gift you could have ever gotten. Maybe here tonight you don't know him. You want to come and give your heart and life to him. Maybe he's dealt with you about something else. You mind the Lord. Maybe he wants you to go put your arms around somebody. Maybe somebody down here low. And they just need somebody to encourage them. And maybe God wants to use you to do that. Whatever he says during this invitation, you mind the Lord. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for the word of God. And I know, Lord, that nowhere in the scripture do we find that there's a literal Christmas in heaven, but we'll be with Christ forevermore. And all the things that we find dear in Christmas we'll have in heaven forevermore. And God, we sure are grateful for that. And I pray you'd bless, you'd help in this invitation, you'd speak to hearts. I do pray if there's anybody unsaved that, Lord... They'd receive the greatest Christmas gift ever in receiving you. Lord, if there's somebody here tonight that say, but Lord, they're just spirits low, I pray you'd help them, lift them up. God, I pray you'd just work. Your will be done. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.